Good morning, a saint of God here at Christ the King Community Church in Pompton. You watching by Facebook Live. We're excited about having you here. This is our first week that the church has been open for people to come in, and we had an 8.30 service, and we had a wonderful time with the people just hearing the voices of God, uh, lifting up his holy name, and we just invite you uh, right where you're at just to open your heart, lift up your hands, and just give Jesus your very best, and we're going to do the best here, and we're just going to welcome you in as we get ready to worship God. Amen. You know, I've been encouraging folks for a few weeks online to stand and sing with us, but how cool is it that there's people actually here to stand and sing with yeah. us? Uh, so I'm just going to encourage you to stand with me. We're going to lift a prayer, and then we are going to just reign in the Spirit this morning. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. Lord, we are thankful for, for healthy people, for a healthy community, yeah. for a healthy church, not only physically but spiritually, yeah. Lord. And, and, Lord, we know you're moving in this place. On, on Pentecost Sunday, we know your Spirit is moving. It's already been moving, and it's going to continue to move through this worship. God, we give you glory. We give you praise, and we give you thanks in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's put our hands together. One. Two, one, two, three, four. Sounds good. Here we go. The rocks will cry out. The oceans will roar. The mountains will bow to the name of the Lord. He is our God. He will be great. The idols will talk. The strongholds will break. Every weapon that forms will shatter and fail. He is our God. He is our faith. Lift it up. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to the move of God. Revival. Revival will come. The church will await, his anthem will drown, all other refrains, he is our song, he forever reigns. Praise is the highway to the throne of God, praise is the highway to the heart of God, praise is the highway to the moon. the heart of God, praise is the highway to the move of God, praise is the highway to the throne of God, praise is the highway to the heart of God, praise is the highway to the move of God. Break down the walls with a shout of praise. Lift up your voice, pull heaven down, or sing like thunder. Make his praises loud. Lift up your hands, swing wide the gates. Break down the walls with a shout of praise. Lift up your voice, pull heaven down, or sing like thunder. Make his praises loud. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to the move of God. Oh, yes, Lord God. Praise is that highway, Lord God. We thank you. Praise you for that, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. <laughs>
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. spoke earlier that it's Pentecost Sunday and it, you know it's kind of crazy that you know I don't believe it's coincidence I don't think there's coincidence with anything with God but when we think about you know the book of Acts and when when Christ ascended it into heaven in in the Gospels but 40 days later the fullness of the yeah. spirit came down upon the world and that spirit that he promised to be with us and that Holy Spirit that's still with us today yeah. and I know you know every single person in this room has been impacted in some way over the last 12 weeks of, you know, with illness, with financial struggles, with, you know, knowing people who are going through difficult things, you know, even the racial strife and everything that's going on right now, <laughs> but if there was ever a time when we needed God to move, uh, it's now, Amen. And, and I certainly believe God is moving this morning, and, and I would encourage you, this next song we're going to sing is called, This is a Move, yes, let's Lord. just welcome the Spirit of God Amen. into this place. <clears throat> Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, God we believe. believe. Yes, we can see. The wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. 
giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. Sing it out. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We need a move. We need a move. Sound awesome. Here we go. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. Amen. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. Lift it up. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We need a move. When you move, healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. It's here right now. It's here right now. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. It's coming. This is a move. This is a move. This is a move. This is a move. This is a Be 
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I just want you to just, let's take this holy moment here. You know, it doesn't matter how many times we sing that song, it, it continues to bless me. I tell you what, that song right there and the, and the worship and the spirit moving was worth getting up already just for that. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that you are for us. You are for us, Jesus. You're not against us. Thank you, Jesus. You continue to bless us. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We thank you, Jesus, for blessing us, that we can be a blessing to others, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for you've already started a work in our hearts, Lord Jesus. We know that when you start a good work, you'll finish it. Oh, we're so grateful, Lord Jesus. We know, Lord God, you're, you're moving here this morning, moving by our Facebook live feed. We know that there's no distance in prayer. There's no distance in praise because there's no distance with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, I'm in your midst. So here at, at our physical building and by watching out over our simulcast and all that, I want you to know you're not alone. You may be by yourself, but you're never alone. Because Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know what you may be going through this morning, but I want you to know the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you, Jesus. You've started a work in our lives. You're going to continue to fulfill it. In your name we pray, amen. I'm going to ask you here. Give everybody a, a long-distance high-five. Long-distance, there you go. Yep, we give everybody a, a long-distance high-five. And you can be seated, that'd be fine. We give everybody uh, watching by uh, our, our Facebook live feed a long-distance high-five. We are so happy that you're here with us this morning. And, you know, we always want to keep praying for our children. That's very important for us. And maybe we can't physically lay hands on them yet here. But with our kids here, what we want to do we want our families. If you kids, will you stand up wherever you're at, kids? If you just stand up right where you're at. And then I, what I want the parents to do is, is put, their, put their hands on their kids. And I want you to take about 10 or 15 seconds. I want you to bless the kids. And then I'm going to finish it, okay? And you on television or watching my television or whatever uh, device, I want you to bless your kids right where they're at, okay? I'm going to give you 10, 15 seconds. Just pray a blessing over them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for our children. They are a blessing from Almighty God. Lord, we thank you that children are a gift from the Holy One of Israel. And we do pray blessings upon our children and our children and our children's children. We thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Sickness will not come near their dwelling place. We thank you that their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. And I thank you, Lord God, that we are training them up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. We thank you for our children here at Christ the King, and we thank you for the children and their homes that we're praying blessings over them wherever they may be at. In your name we pray, amen. And you may be seated. Thank you. You know, uh, we're going to also pray a little bit for our country this morning. Well, you know, it's been pretty radical. Uh, as I said in our earlier service, what we really need is 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, And the Bible says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, you, I will hear from heaven, I will heal their land. Because... We have racial problems. We have economic problems. We have just a lot of problems. And you know what, what I love, though? Our God is a problem solver, okay? 
And the Bible says if we will pray and humble ourselves, because see, prayer is humbling yourself. Prayer is saying, I can't do it myself. And we're saying, Lord, we need you to touch our nation. Because I believe with all my heart the United States of America is a wonderful and a great nation. Not because of us, because I believe God has put his blessings upon our nation. We have been a nation that has shared the gospel through the whole world for centuries. Okay, we've gone out. And the devil would love to come in and steal and kill and destroy from our nation. So we need to lift up our president, our vice president, our congressmen, all those involved. And, you know, pray for our law enforcement agents, you know, uh, that they will be the men of God, the women of God that God's called them to be, that people will respect them. The Bible says we should respect them. They're a, a person of authority. Amen. Well, let's pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day you've given us, Lord. The sun is out, Lord God. We have a new batch of mercies waiting for us. And Lord, I I do want to lift up our nation, Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that all this darkness will will be brought to light and will be dealt with in a godly manner. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, where where sin is, Lord God, grace does abound much more. We pray, Lord God, for the favor of God. We pray for the Holy Spirit to go and comfort the many people that are hurting, Lord God. People that have suffered injustices, Lord God. But Lord God, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would comfort them and give them a hope, Lord Jesus. Let them know, Jesus, that you're the answer to every situation in their life. We thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for the faithfulness of the people here at Christ the King, for those watching uh, by our Salmacast, how they've been so faithful, Lord God, these 11 weeks, and not only praying for your church here at Christ the King, but supporting it, Lord God, with their financial offerings, Lord. And and I just pray in the name of Jesus, you continue to bless the seed that goes in the barn today, that, Lord God, that you would just, uh, just watch over it and let it grow, let it bring a 30, 60, 100-fold return in their lives. Whatever they have need of, Lord God, you'll meet that need according to all your riches and glory. And all God's people said, amen. You know, and, and as we're getting ready for our sermon, I want to say uh, we don't pass our offering plate now anymore. And so we have actually a, a chest in the very back underneath the clock. And so as you come in or as you leave, if you have an offering you'd like to bring, just drop it right in there. Also, the, the slit in that, the slot is big enough that with your prayer request or your praise reports, write those down. They'll go right in the slot there too. And we'll make sure that we pray for them because we know our God is still in the prayer answering business. Amen. And we thank you for that. Thank you, worship team. What I want you to do, if you would, this morning, I'm going to start a two-part series this morning and next week about passing the baton. You know, last week here in Nebraska would have been the track, state and field track meet last week, uh, uh, two weeks ago, okay? And so I want to talk about passing the baton. And, you know, I was never really fast in life, okay? But I could run a long distance, you know? That's kind of like saying... You know, they don't look real good, but they got a good personality. Okay, you know what I'm saying? That was me, okay? But uh, I enjoy track so much. My wife ran track. My son ran track. I get to coach track here in in Ponca with the junior high kids. And it's exciting to coach track. It really is. And but uh, So the next couple weeks, I'm going to talk about passing the baton. Passing the baton off. To the next generation. I want some scriptures I want to read with you here in 1 Corinthians 9 24. It reads, Do you not know that those who run run in a race that all run? But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. What's Paul really saying here? Paul's letting us know as Christians that we're not out for just some little leisure run. Paul says, Everybody may run, but only one gets the prize. And so we need to realize when we're running with our Christian walk, we're running with a purpose. And the purpose is to obtain the prize. You know, it's not good enough to say, I just want to go out and enjoy myself. God isn't calling us to enjoy ourselves first. And you know what I found out in life? The winners are always enjoying themselves anyway, okay? Okay. When you go to the finish line, when everybody runs the same 1,600 we're talking about today, they all ran the same 1,600 
It seems like the guy that won, he has a smile on his face. And the guy that didn't win, he might be thrown up in the corner. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, you know what? So if you want to win, or if you want to enjoy yourself, why don't you win? You'll always have a smile on your face there. So he's saying, you know what? Let's make sure we run with a purpose, our walk that we call faith. And over in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it's a wonderful verse that the Hebrew writer wrote. It said, therefore we also, since we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, everybody say weight, every weight and the sin, say sin. Yeah. See, we're going to find out there's a difference between weight and sin, okay, which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. See, the writer of Hebrews is saying we all have a race that's set before us. See, for the race of life, we as believers, the Bible says, the, reader, the, the writer of Hebrews says, we need to lay down the weight. You know, there are some things in your life, there are some things in my white life that are not sinful, but they're weighing down my race with Jesus. And it could be, it's different for each and every one of us. There might be a relationship. There might be an attitude. It's not necessarily sinful, but it's not helping you in your race. And so the writer of Hebrews says, you know what? Let's lay that aside too. And then he goes on to say, and the sin. Not only sin, but also the things that aren't quite sin that are weighing us down. Because what? We need to trim down for this race. You know what? And this is to get rid of the weight and the sin that impedes our progress. See, God has a race for every one of us. In fact, we're going to talk about next week how Paul said he finished his race. And you know what? God wants us all to finish our race. But there's constantly being weight added to us and sometimes sin that is weighing us down. And the next scripture I want to turn to is over in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. This is the, uh, the Paul, what Paul is writing. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. You know, does anybody think the Apostle Paul is probably a pretty smart guy? Do you think the Apostle Paul is somebody that God used? He wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul made three known missionary journeys around the known world. And if the Apostle Paul says, and this one thing I do, you know what I think I should do? I should pay attention. If this, Paul could have said a lot of things, couldn't he? But he says, this is the one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I could have told you a lot of things to make sure you do, but forget the things that are behind you and press forward to the things that are in front of you. Too many people get weighted down in their race, remembering, quote, the good old days, or remembering how bad those days were. Paul says, forget them and keep going forward. Amen? See, we have to forget what is behind us and we need to keep our eyes on the prize the goal or the finish line the language that paul is using here is that of a runner completely forgetting his opponents are following him in the race and he realizing that even the slightest look back will slow down his progress i see little brody here and brody heck of a junior high cross country runner and i think he's going to be a heck of a, uh, a high school runner but Brody would take off. And last year, I think Brody ran five races in junior high. He played football for us during the day and ran at night, basically, you know. He didn't even train for his cross-country season. And Brody would go and run the races, and he won all five of his races, every one of them. And one thing, and when I coached Brody in junior high, it was amazing. Because when we, he'd be doing the 1,600 run, or I don't know if we did the two-mile in, in junior high, but as Brody would run, I'd tell him, don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. I said, give me your heart. Just keep full focus going forward. And Brody would. I don't know if I ever really saw Brody looking back. I know, because I said, you know what? If you're looking back, that's the first sign you're starting to tire. And in case I know, coach, a, a state championship team in the 4x4, four four, I think it was over at Allen. You tell the kids, don't look back. That's like blood in the water for a shark. They're starting to fade, and you know what? You can get after them then. 
So Paul's saying, don't look back. The one thing I don't do is look back. I keep pressing forward towards the goal. See, we need to realize that we're all in a race, and we all have a choice or decision to make. Do we want to run this race as an individual race, or do we want to run this race as a relay race? Okay? Our knowledge is important. I know some of you guys are going to college, you know, and it was cut short, but going to college, there's nothing wrong with that. Knowledge is important, but knowledge alone isn't enough. If you and I go to our grave with keeping that knowledge to ourselves, it was wasted. See, we need to pass it on to the next generation. I, I'm talking about knowledge here, but I'm also talking about our spiritual beliefs. Very, very important. We need to be able to pass that knowledge on to the next generation of runners, okay? If we don't, the race stops with us. I think how sad would it be for Derek over there to have all this knowledge about the Lord, and he, and he loved Jesus, and he never passed it on to his girls? Wouldn't that be a sad state of mind? And so we need to make sure we're willing to pass on our baton. See, the race shouldn't end with us. Each year, it's the truth, each year, hundreds of churches close, be, not because it's God's will, but because many of the members or the runners didn't hand off the baton to the next generation. You know that? And that is sad. When this happens, you know what happens? The race for that church is done. And you know what, folks? We don't need churches closing in our country. We need churches opening in this country. But you know what's amazing in life? A lot of times I put the blame on the older generation. I'm just being very honest with you. They'll say, well, that's not the way we always did it. Well, don't you know we're supposed to have hymnals, not screens like this. Don't you know you're supposed to be dressed up in a clerical collar, not with tennis shoes on, hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, we've, and so what we've done is we've kept the younger generation out. And there's an interesting verse in the book of Acts. And it says that when the day of Pentecost came, and, the, and when the Holy Spirit came upon and they all spoke with tongues, and it tells us that they all heard the apostles glorifying God in their own language. I've always thought that was an interesting verse. And you know what I found out? And we're so blessed here at Christ the King. I hope you are, are, are watching by telecast too. We've been so blessed to have so many young people here. College and high school and junior high. Because you know what? If you want college and high school and junior high and elementary, you've got to speak their language. If you're going to speak the language of 40 years ago, you know what, folks? They're not coming. And I tell people this all the time. You never change the message, but you have to always be changing the method. Very, very important. My wife, when she was in high school years ago, she ran on a cinder track. Some of you might remember those things, okay? And you know what? If you wanted to have a good track team now, you would not tell them, come out for the track team. We have a cinder track for you to run on. You know what they'd say? They still like my, like my, they would like running, run, like running, but not on a cinder track. You're still running the 400 meters, but you're putting it on now an artificial track. You understand? Same 400, different method, okay? Very, very important, okay? This life that we call Christianity is so much more than just about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about passing the baton off to the next generation. It's about those who came before us, those who are here with us, and those that are coming. We sang that song today, that blessing, a thousand generations to our children and their children and their children. See, we're just praying blessing on maybe a generation of grandchildren and great-grandchildren we don't even know about yet. But we're saying, Lord, we want to pass on this blessing to our family. Very, very important. You know what we call this? It's called evangelism. You know, I look right here this morning, I look over with Gwen and I see her mother. See, that they're in a relay race. Gwen's mother passed on her faith to Gwen. Gwen passed on her faith to Casey. Casey now is passing on to his kids. That's a generation to generation to generation to generation. Amen. And I tell you what, how exciting that has to be. Seeing four generations of a family worshiping God together. 
See, all those other things, I don't care what's in your 401k. I don't care how much money you have in your bank. I don't care what kind of car you drive. Can you tell you, that is a blessing, hallelujah. Those are things money can't buy. And obviously, somebody was passing on the baton to the next generation. And I think that's very, very important. See, with an individual race, only one participant gets to reap the joys of running. And if we was, uh, can we put the slide up there, Matt? No, I'm going to show you. Here it is. This is, a, this is the track, the 400-meter track. And, and when we're going to talk about the, the 1,600, or what we call the metric mile. And in an individual race, the 1,600, an individual runs around that track four times. And you know what? That's wonderful if you win. But you know what's amazing? When you win, who do you get to celebrate with? Yourself. But you know what? It's really kind of amazing because if you go by the 4x6 or the 1600 relay, you know what happens? You cover the same amount of distance, but you're only running 400 meters. And when that happens, you're handing the baton off to another runner. And then he takes off, okay? And all of a sudden, when you win, instead of celebrating by yourself, what do you got? You got three other guys to celebrate with you. It's kind of interesting. The world record for the 1600 run is three minutes and 43 seconds and some change. That's an individual going around the track four times. The world record for the 4x4, four four, the 1600, which means they're still going around the 1600 the same amount of times, but one person is only running once instead of one person running four times. The world record is two minutes and 54 seconds. Both of these races cover the same distance, 1600 meters. But the world records are almost 50 seconds apart. Why? Because one can one can run fa one individual cannot run faster than four when you're going over 1600 meters. That's an average of 12 seconds faster each lap. 12 plus some change. What's the Lord trying to show us here? We can cover the same distance faster if we're willing to hand off the baton. If we're willing to hand off the baton. If we're willing to hand this off to the next generation, we can accomplish the same amount, but doing it quicker. You know, in the church of Jesus Christ, the Lord isn't looking for one superstar that, can, uh, that everything rests upon. He's looking for a team that can shoulder the burden together and complete the race that's set before them. You know, I've, I, I like watching the Olympics. I like watching track and field. I like watching those things. Just because you got a really good 400 runner doesn't mean you're going to win the 4x4. Four four. So i got news for you. If you can get a team of four runners that maybe there's not a superstar, but they're all pretty good, they're going to beat the team with the superstar. And we need to realize, you know, maybe God has blessed you with a wonderful gift, but i got news for you. If you'll share that gift with others, it'll go much further in life. Amen? Over in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32, verse 29. Deuteronomy 32, 29. And it reads, oh, that they were wise, that they understood that this, that they would consider their latter end. What are you doing to consider your latter end? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Many people have a 401k and other retirement plans financially, but what are they doing to pass on their faith to those around us? Is having a 401k wrong? No, not in your life. Is planning for your family, if something happened to you, is that wrong? No, it's being actually very responsible, okay? But if you're not passing on something spiritually to your family, you're being irresponsible. And I promise you, somebody that has a lot of resources without a compass in life is going to do a lot more damage than if you'll make sure your, your family has a moral compass and maybe not as much financially, amen? You know, it's kind of amazing in life here. In a survey, people over 90 years old was asked this question. If you had your life to live over, what would you do differently? Thank God nobody said, marry somebody else. Okay, I'm happy about that, okay? Number one, they said, I'd spend more time with my family and friends. You know, as a minister for over 40 years, I've been around dying people. I've never once heard them say on their deathbed, man, I wish I would have worked longer. Man, I wish I would have taken that overtime when the company offered it to me. Oh, I wish I would have been away from my family more. I wish, no. You know what I hear them say? I wish I would have had more time with my family. 
spent time. That was number one. Number two, they said they wished they would have taken more risk. More risk. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And number three, they said they do things that would live on after they died. You know what? There's billions of people in our world today. There's been billions of people around. Everybody wants to go to heaven, right? Come on. But you know what the how you get there? You die. You know, out of all the billions of people that have lived on this earth, only two have ever made it to heaven without dying. Enoch and Elijah. Those are the only two. If you think you're going to be the third, your odds are pretty stacked against you. Okay, I'm just being honest with you, okay? You might make it. I'm okay with that. But the odds are stacked against you, okay? And so we need to realize that someday we're going to die. So what are we doing with the gifts that God has blessed us with? And when I'm saying gifts, I'm not saying financial things, earthly things. I'm saying the spiritual gifts. What are we doing to pass the baton on? Because you know what, folks? I've told you this before. I have seen, I've, I've had the kid that made the winning shot on the basketball court. You know what? I, I got news for you. Six months later, they don't even care. I've had my son chase down a kid in the 4 by 4 and win at the end. You know what? Nobody even cares. I've had my kid I go to tennis. My girls have gone to state tournaments. All those things. You know what? I, you know, we made the big old uh, uh, the, the poster with all, the, all my daughter's uh, press clippings. And she looks at it now. She's embarrassed. She said, Dad, why do you keep that stuff? See, all the things we think are so important to pass on, they fade. So why should we be making sure we pass on to our kids the baton of faith? The baton of faith. Because you know what? They don't care about if their picture was in the paper or not. They don't care if they made the winning shot. Nobody cares. You know, I, I tell you this. I bet you nobody can tell you. We won two state championships here in boys basketball. Maybe the Kingsbury boys might know this, but maybe nobody else. When was the last year we won a state championship at Ponca? You see, what they, I don't know. And you know what I loved about Coach Pulaski? I wasn't here the first year they won their first stage, their state championship and back-to-back. But they told me at the pep rally, Coach Pulaski, he told the boys this. He said, boys, don't let this ever be the highlight of your life. You're not supposed to be living about this thing that you accomplished in high school 30, 40 years ago or later. This is just a moment in life, and you go on. And I, I, I really do appreciate Coach Pulaski because a lot of state championship coaches would not be saying that. And so I'm saying those are all wonderful things. Work hard and accomplish those things, but I got news for you. Someday we're going to grow old, and we're not going to be able to do the things we'd like to do. But you know what we can still do? We can still pass on the baton. We can still pass on the baton. Grandma can be, still be saying, kids, love Jesus with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Grandma can still say, you know what, kids? I've been young and I've been old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging for bread. Kids, I want you to know, we've gone through hard times, but Jesus never left us, nor forsake, or forsook us. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're passing on the baton. Those are the things that are going to keep us going in life. See, in an individual race, once it's over, you're finished. It's over. And a relay, when you hand the baton off to the next runner, uh, runner you know what happens? They start building on what you did. What I want for my family, I'm sure what you want for your family, you want to run your race as husband and wife to pass the baton off to your children so they can start where you're finishing. You don't want them to have to go through all the stuff you went through. You want them to start. And because you know what? We sang about not only their children, but their children's children. And you know what? I pray for my great-grandchildren already. They said, you got some somewhere, hallelujah. They're coming someday, hallelujah. And you know what? I know about prayer. There's no expiration date in prayer. Amen. I'm praying for my great-grandchildren now because if I die before they come, I don't want to leave them uncovered. I want to leave them covered with a prayer from a great-granddad they never knew with the blood of Jesus. I want to pass that baton off to them. Amen? See, in a relay... Speed isn't the most important issue all the time. Sometimes it's handing off the baton in a smooth and calculated way. Many times is the difference 
between winning and losing. And I, and I use this example in the first service. The McGee's have a license plate that says, Jesus wins. Okay? See, Jesus went to the cross so you could win. Say, say, say that with me. Jesus went to the cross so I could win. I know people say, oh, it's not how you, uh, it's not if you win or lose, it's how you play your game. You know who says that the people didn't win? <laughs> They're not. You know what? They're the ones saying that. Oh, it doesn't matter. You're such a good sport. Oh, we're going to give you a participation award. <laughs> Put that with your senior class when, you, when they come to celebrate. Oh, look at that. You were a very good participant, weren't you? Okay, hallelujah. No, Jesus says, it says, look what it says in uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now, thanks be to God who always, say always with me, who always leads us into defeat, right? Into triumph. Say triumph. See, Jesus wants you and I to triumph. Oh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yes, it does matter in life. It says, uh, it causes us to triumph in Christ and through us diffuses or manifests the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. See, I'm passing on the baton so you can win. I'm not passing you the baton so you can get last place. Okay? I want you to win. Jesus wants you to win in your spiritual life. You know, very sad. Nate, our youngest son, had a friend that died last week, 32 years old. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. A 32-year-old that his life was gone. And I thought, wow, that wasn't the best. And I wonder, what could I have done maybe more when they were young? You know what I'm saying? Even though I coached them in tennis, every Friday after our tennis practice in high school, I'd always tell them, be good this weekend and go to church. I told my kids that every week. And Brandon told me once, he said, Jeff, you're the only coach I ever had that told me every Wednesday, every Friday, be good on the weekend and go to church. I was trying to pass on a baton to somebody else. Because you know what, it's no, you know, it doesn't matter if I have a dozen of these in my drawer. <laughs> They're not doing me any good. And it doesn't matter what you have in your faith if you're just keeping it to yourself. God wants us to pass it on. And you know what? Let's not start passing it on to everybody around the world. Let's start passing it on in our family. Amen? It says in Acts chapter 8, the Holy Spirit has come upon us to be a witness in Jerusalem. I always tell people, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. See, Jerusalem was home. Start passing the baton off at home. There's no sense of winning the world if you're losing your own family. Judea would be your neighborhood. Maybe your acquaintance. Samaria would even be your enemy because the Samaritans and the, and the Jews were not friends. And the uttermost parts of the world Then worry about the world. But start with your home passing the baton off to you. See, if you don't want to hand off the baton to the next generation or generation, eventually you know what's going to happen? You're going to get tired. I see Dalton back there. He ran. Didn't you run the 4 by 4 Dalton? Yeah, you did. Okay, I thought so. And you know, if you're not willing to hand off that baton, you're going to get tired at the end. I, you know, I don't think this ever happened, but I could have seen Dalton. They're in the four by four, and he comes around the first leg, and he tells the second runner, get out of here. I think I got this one. I know he'd never do because I've seen him run that. Okay, but if he did, you know what's going to happen? Maybe he feels good at the 400 meter. I promise you, at the 600 meter on the back, he's dying, baby. You know what I'm saying? He's thinking, no, I should have handed this dude off to the other one. And see, if we're going to hang on to our baton, if we're going to hang on to our faith, if we're not going to share it with anybody else, eventually we're going to get tired. But I tell you what, what a joy it was. Dalton knows this. I coached him before. My junior high girls team, I coached for two years. We didn't have it this year. My 4 by 4 team never lost. Never lost. The closest they ever came to getting beat was like 20 seconds. It was fun, so fun going down to South Sioux uh, a couple years ago. And there's healing down there. And there's, you know, Dakota Valley down there. All these bigger schools, you know. And there's little Ponca. I said, girls, this is going to be fun, isn't it? I said, you run scared. And they sure did. And I tell you what, they took off that first time. Then they handed the second. And it was so fun as a coach, man. Man, I'm beaming like nothing, baby. 
Those are my girls, baby. Those are my girls. I got a picture of them, too. And I tell you what, because they handed that off, and the next one took off. And you know what? I get so proud of you guys many times in life. I do. I have. I told those people go to Christ the King. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them. What they're doing, I'm proud of them. Because you know what? When we hand up a time off, when we see somebody taken off in a fresh way, it brings strength to us. Amen? See, if you are willing to give up control of the baton to the next runner or generation, they can take off with new strength 